going off to the ICFs, you know, probably the thing there is get somebody that's installed them, somebody that understands. Like most foundation systems, you get challenged with water, you get challenged thermally, you get challenged with vapor, yep. and of course, we have radon coming through the slab. And one additional challenge, you're leaving these forms in place, right? You know, the insulated concrete form is the form that stays in place. Yep. So now we've got this issue a little bit with the water of where do I make this wall waterproof, right? right. Do I make that wall waterproof back here mm -hmm. where the concrete wall is or do I make it waterproof or what's my, I should say my Alamo as you like to say, my last no. line of defense. So that being said, let's look at some solutions for those. And to, to piggyback that, you really wanna make sure who your ICF manufacturer is and check with them. So if you're spray applying a waterproofing, you wanna make sure it's compatible oh, that's a great point. with that ICF manufacturer. Not You're not gonna eat the foam or deteriorate the foam. Same is true with peel and sticks as well. You could yeah. make a uh, big mistake by putting an asphaltic based product up against the foam that it's gonna eat. So you yep. need to be a little cautious about that, you're right. Let's talk about solutions. Water, we solved that. Yep. We solved pretty it nice. by distance, that's pretty, pretty nice. simple. Air, you know, one of the things about air here that when I was doing this detail, that's pretty interesting, and it took me back to the days of at building science. You know, I'll draw this over here. We have a wall and then we have a floor. Mm -hmm. If I took that and rotated it, I would have a very thick wall and a very thin floor. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, is these are pretty much the same. Yeah. It's just orientation, Yep. right? Now, the difference is I'm probably not leaning up against that wall all the time, but I will be standing on there. Yep. So I have a comfort issue because I have direct contact there. Mm -hmm. But as far as air sealing, thermal and vapor, everything that happens across here is pretty much everything that happens across there. So what I'm hearing you say is, why wouldn't we build that floor the same way we'd build our wall? Is that where you're going? That's exactly where I'm going. So when you look at thermally, we have a stud wall, we have some cavity insulation, and then we put continuous rigid insulation on the outside. Mm -hmm. Here, we have a thicker stud wall, yep. in this case, floor joist. Yep. We put some cavity insulation, and then because we have that bottom cord that has a thermal break, mm -hmm. we continuously put some rigid insulation there to take care of that thermal break. And then we also, uh, maybe jumping ahead, but you've got your air barrier uh, on the outside as well. And we've used a lot of Huber Zip system, but there are other options right. for air barriers as well. So just like that wall has the air barrier on the outside, your floor now has that air barrier on the outside as well. <laughs>